Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. Uh, there's, uh, there's an awful lot to talk about in description, but I'll try to cover as much ground as I can. At the same time, try to keep in mind again about the questions, because they're very important. Uh, later on, you'll see, uh, you know, because I've, uh, I've been to retreats and all that, and the, the questions at first didn't uh, come through, and then all of a sudden, as the day went in, it started to be more questions, more questions. All of a sudden, there, there was a lot there. And it gave a lot of good discussion, like later on, like on a retreat, we won't have that time, but uh, uh, things uh, to talk about that were forgotten about were brought back again by the questions. So in step two, you know, like I said, the the purposes of step two, being in the second position of application of building a new character, try to remember, if you can, that this here character now that I'm talking about is character building in the day you're in, living it, living it. Now, see if you can, the, if the concept is very, very difficult to hear. It's the words you can listen to, but the application is very difficult because of the habit formed of yourself, uh, the way self has always took hold of the situation, always thinking and acting, knowing how to act ahead of time even. But you see, step two has to be identified before the other steps can be used in application because of what step two is for. Now, step two, when it says, I came to believe in a power greater than me to restore me to sanity, is the, is the start or it's the qualifying step so that the foundation can be laid for a way of life as a character building in step three. But first, step two has to be really looked at for what it is, because I came to believe in a power greater than me means that I have to build a relationship now, a relationship with something other than me. Like I said before, I've always lived with me, been with me, talked to me, draw all my information for me, all of my action, all of everything. Now it's going to have to be a little differently to at least look at it, and then it'll change. And that means that I'm going to have to believe in a power greater than me. And how can I believe in a power greater than me if I still stay with me or talk to me and go to me as a source of supply? That's where this here self-discipline and this here self-sacrifice, meaning of getting away from self, of not wanting or it, or at least trying something other than what I normally or average do all the time. So, so here, this starts this starts a brand new a brand new venture really because the open-mindedness that I talked about. And quit arguing or quit the debating society, a chicken and an egg, the arguing part. With an open mind, I can stop arguing. I can stop debating. So I must have the open mind first. The open mind is a mind member that doesn't have preconceived ideas, that isn't banking on yesterday's information and holding still today because of that information. This means that you're receptive, at least receptive, to look at it, to see it, to identify it. And that means... Just exactly that. You still haven't, you're still not doing anything in application as far as the building of the character is in principle. The building of the character is that you're going to be start now believing in something other than what you have believed in self. And that, this is difficult, but it's, it's not impossible. Uh, it means that this is a character building thing as you live your life now. Right this moment, now, every one of us now, needs, we have to have an open mind. Because if we don't, we go back to self. We go immediately to preconceived ideas. Your mind slams shut because you're lost with self. You're lost with the power. The power says it's okay. You can get away with it. I don't need to do that. And next thing you know, you're back in the, you're doing the same thing you've always done. Step two is a real hard, hard step to listen to because it's always the same thing. Self does not want to see self. Self won't identify self to self. Self just won't do that. And there's no way that you can make yourself do it. But if there's a power that's greater than self. When this power is, is identified, you build a relationship. The relationship is that there's something there. Now, I was saying that I learned to pray, and I learned to pray by another man's God. And the way I did it is that I asked this power that he called God to help me. You see, that's believing 
in something and trying something I never tried before. I start, I want to believe in something other than me, and so I ask something other than me to help me. And that was a beginning. That's what step two is all about, is actually trying now to do something that I need to do. Now, you see, if, if I think in terms, I don't want to do it, I won't do it. If I think in terms that there's a bunch of baloney, I don't, that's, that's, that's not right, then it'll stay like that. But you see, the requirement of the open mind and this debating society opens the door for me, opens my mind for me, so that the quarrel doesn't have to be there. The quarrel against something, regardless of what it is, right or wrong. It's not a question now of right or wrong no more. It's a question of that's there. Let's look at it. Let's not try to do anything about it. Let's not do that. Let's just let's identify it. See if this is me. See if I do this. See if my mind is like this. It hasn't, nothing happened yet. So why not at least open your mind to that? Well, that's what it means as far as the quarreling, the debating society. I don't have to debate nothing. I don't have to say that won't work, this will, that does, whatever. I don't have to argue against or for something. So it's important for step two. See, to believe in a power greater than me will restore me to sanity. It's not insanity. That has no reference to insanity. Restore me to sanity is a condition of the mind, wholeness of a mind, wellness of a mind. A mind that isn't selfish, a mind that isn't locked tight with self, a mind that isn't full of me, period. Sanity and soundness of mind is a wholeness of mind, something I have no way of knowing and no way of doing. But step three, step two, allows me to get ready or to be qualified to go into the next step in principle. So in principle, I'm building a character now. The character I'm building is the character I am right now. I'm trying right now to believe in something other than me by application. I'm building a relationship with a power greater than me by talking to this power, by associating my life to this power, by asking this power to help me. Would you Would you be there? Anything, anything at all. It's not a prayer. I'm not praying to God. I'm not getting on my knees. I'm, I'm building a relationship. So the day I'm in, as I live my life today, it's, I'm going to something other than what I normally or always have one to, and that's self. This, this step two is a step that is never talked about. It's, it's never talked about at all. And yet, though, step two is the major, major, major problem of any alcoholic that I know of, including me, when the alcoholism isn't being treated. Because it's always the same thing, self. It's always about my power. It's always about me refusing to do something, to accept something. It's always about the same story all the time. Step two, I came to believe in a power greater than me to restore me to sanity. And this here means exactly that. How could I possibly believe in anything if I'm not with that? I'm with self. Because I talk to myself. Step two is where I learned about talking. I'm a power. I talk to myself. <clears throat> this day to day. Talking to myself this day is very easy. All I have to do is just, I've got an opinion. Just put it in motion. And then my, my mind will say, Oh, man, is he going to say that again? And that's, I sit there over and over. He keeps saying the same thing over. No, I don't say it over and over again. I'm not saying it over and over again. The reason why is because this moment, this now, is now. The moment I said it was the other now that went by already. See? <laughs> See? <laughs> my alcoholism says I can live by my past. See? Because I know that already. See, I already know that. I, you told me that. You told me that a hundred times. No, I didn't tell you a hundred times. I told you now because it is now. And so I have to look at this for what it is. See, my alcoholism needs treating now. It doesn't need treating an hour ago or tomorrow or next hour. It needs it now. You see, my life, the power of me is on right now. My disease is on right now. If the program recovery isn't with me now, I haven't got one. My sponsor told me a long time ago, he says, when I wake up in the morning, in my own home, meaning wherever I was, he says, if you don't start your Alcoholics Anonymous program recovery right then, you haven't got one. And I says, what does that, that don't That don't make sense. Yes, it does make sense. You see, what he was saying is, is that the power of self, when it's on, it's on. And that's all there is to it. It means that my intentions... Or my way of thinking is that I'm, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that, it's going to turn out this way, it's going to turn out that way, everything's going to be cool, I'm a nice guy, everything's fine, so on, and, but that life never appears. Because the character remains the same, meaning me. 
When I go into the day, I'm still with me. Even though I prayed to God, even though I did talk to this God, even though I did all these things, that's a praying God. That's a God of name. That's a God of ritual. That's not a living God. You see, in Alcoholics Anonymous, alcoholism has to be treated now. It means that yesterday, God took care of me yesterday. He supplied everything I needed yesterday. But that was only because it was yesterday. To do it today would mean I'd have to have a living God with me today. That's not a praying God. I pray. Don't think I don't. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying, though, the power of self becomes the God if the God that's greater than me isn't there because I won't let God in my life. I'll pray to God and then walk my own direction, think my own way, look look at the world just the way I want to look at it. Doesn't mean no difference. And now I'm the same man as I've always been, and I'll have to look at life the same way I look at it, and I'll have to do exactly another repeat performance. Step two, believe me, step two is a major, major, they're all major, but we'll get this wrong. But step two, building a character, has to be built from step two. Because what step two is for, to come to believe in something other than self, to build a relationship with a power greater than me that can do something I can't do. And this is important. How could that be? It can't go through self. So right now, this, this moment right now even, to call on the power, which I learned in three, we'll talk about in a second here, but to call upon this power, I must have a foundation. I must have something that will allow me to make a decision. To make a decision is always a decision to do something, whether you're not going to do it or you're going to do it. That's a decision either way. But it says in step three, I made a decision to turn my will and my life over to care of God as I understood him. So there's a lot of coverage right there. There's an awful lot to say. And it's really, it's really something to look at because of what step two is for in step two. You see, for each and every one of us, as we live our lives, we think well. We try to think well. We try to look ahead to anticipate and to act and to do things. And we don't have the power to do that. Something happens. The power gets switched somehow or another. Here comes the power of self through maybe greed, maybe lust, maybe anything. doesn't make no difference what it is. And next thing you know, you've got the same problem you've always had. The wrong power is in control again. That means the power of the disease of alcoholism, meaning self, and the decision you took back. The reason you take it back is because the foundation was never laid in step two was to show you and I as alcoholics that we can do something now we never could do before. We have to build a relationship with a power that's greater than us that can do something we can't do. Three says, let's make a decision now to turn our will and our lives. My will and my life is exactly what I represent. The whole character that I am, what I brought here is my will. My life is the performance that I do in the day I'm in. Whatever I do right now, right here this minute, my life is here in this church right now. This is my life right now. My will is the power of the mind. The way my eyesight sees what eyes are thinking doesn't make no difference. Hearing. Everything that I'm backed up by is going to be in my will. My will is where my storage is, where the file cabinet is, where the power of self is. This is what is the two is explaining in step two. And then three, when it says I make a decision, a decision I'm going to do something, what am I going to do? I'm going to turn my will and my life over to his care. How would I put it in his care? I can't put it in my care. How would I put it in his care? This is what this is about. This is about that we willingness, the key, the key that opens the door is the key of willingness. Willingness is when? Willingness is in all of my affairs. When's all of my affairs? Right now. Anywhere I go. Doesn't make no difference. Whether I'm at work, in my car, at home, you name it. My will has to be in alignment with God's will so he can take care of it. The willingness to have this, what I'm talking about, means in prayer, in thought, in deed. Everything about this. Now, step two says that I can believe in something. You can do something I can't do. And step three says I made a decision to turn my will of my life over to the care of God, in his care, not my care, as I understood him. Understood is not understand. Understood means Understood from two. There's a power greater than me. It's called God in three. That's what it means. That I can build a relationship with a power that I will call God. And this comes out later in steps two. And other steps. But this is important right now to build a foundation. This foundation I'm talking about is a living thing. 
Keep in mind all the time that the moment you're in, the character has to be built in the moment you're in for your life or you have the old character. This is a guarantee right now that this program recovery will be a program recovery. I'll give it to you in writing and sign it. I'll guarantee you everything I say right now could be yours, provided that this method is, is the way of life, that you live according to this. This is all in steps now. This wording is in steps. I know that it's hard to hear. The reason it's hard to hear is because it's an application. And when the application's on, things happen real quick. Each one of us have a mind that goes instantly to self. This is so fast that it, you just can't even, you just don't even know it. It's on, man, like that. Well, the reason it's on like that right there is because the power of self is always being used. And yet, though, we just got through talking about step two, about believing in a power greater than self that will do something I can't do. Restore me to sanity. Sanity is no more than soundness, wholeness of mind. It means that I'm not living with the old character that's full of all the defects. That soundness of mind is something I can't produce. Why not have a power that can produce it? A power that's greater than me, they call God in three. Three, it's understood that when I go to me, I have to take me for all I've got. But there's something else to take. There's a power greater than me that can do what I can't do. So how do you do it? You make a decision. What's a decision? The decision, I'm going to do it. If I miss the mark, I'm still going to do it. If I fail, I'm going to do it again. Matter of fact, if I pray 10 times and forget them, another 10, I'm going to go back and pray again, another 10 maybe. But you see, I'm always going to be the character by application so long as I use the program recovery and the power greater than me. So we don't walk in water. I don't walk in water either. I make a mistake, God can forgive me. The way he forgives me is in the character building. It comes in steps. We're in step three, to build a foundation for Alcoholics Anonymous so that the life I live today, the new character can be there. We're already in step three. We started in the alcoholism, ego, and self. Now we're in one, two, and we're in three. We started building a character by living that character in application the day you're in, step one, then two. See, two didn't need one. One needs two. See, the building of the character is on the moment I start one. Two doesn't need one, but one needs two because the character has to progress forward. I have to keep going, building a character by principles. This is what it means. I go into step one, two, three, and go right up the line. Then it changes, and the 12-step says that. Practice these principles in all our affairs. Principles are what I'm talking about now, of a character that uses principles that are already established. This means exactly that. That these principles that I'm talking about, each and every one of us, you can have them when you apply them. Then they belong to you. The principles are truths. When you live by the truth, you live by the principles. The new character has the power that's introduced into three is where it's defined and it's anchored right there. The foundation is three, really, from this moment on. It's always about a God. God as I understood him, not understand him. I'm not trying to understand him. It's understood that he's a power that's greater than me, that he can do things I can't do. Three says this, that I can have this now. It's understood. I cannot be me. I cannot use me. If I make a mistake, let's go to God and have it corrected, not me. Let's see what we can do, even when I fail. See what this is all about. Why not, why not start a way of thinking, acting, living that's guaranteed for each one of us? That's what the steps are all about. Because you see, the building of the character started in step one. And when it starts in one, it started one up to six. And when we get to six, we'll see that step six, five, four, three, two, one, means all about the disease, all about the character that needs to change, that needs to see, to have what's wrong. Step one to six is about the disease of alcoholism. It's about something that needs to be done, how to do it, what's needed. It's about one to six is application so that the disease of alcoholism is not only identified, recognized, but it's also explained that this must be done this way. Because in step three, if step three is in the third position, just like two is in a special position of number two, to do something to treat alcoholism by building a character as you live in the day you're in. You're not going to build this character tomorrow. That'll never happen. If you got an idea right now of the future, of the time, 
of the place, of the opportunities, or whatever it is, and you're going to be all right, you might as well erase it, because it's not going to be that way. Because this is why the disease is called alcoholism. It's growing, it's going, it's living right now, and it's in me, and if it's in you, then you must recognize that this, what I'm talking about, is a, is a way of life. This is the message of Alcoholics Anonymous. This is all about, you see, the recovery program is only in 12 steps. It is not at meetings like this. This is essential. It's needed. The reading is essential needed. Praying is essential and needed. But that isn't what does it. What does it is application. To change the character by living differently and being differently in the day you're in. So the disease now is not there. It's not being used. And this here, believe me, this is a hard concept to hear. You might not agree with this. I don't know if you do or you don't. It's not important. What is important, though, is at least expose it. At least talk about it. Identify it. Present it. See if it's there. See if it's something that maybe possibly you might need. See if it is. Try it. I had a sponsor. Man, I'll tell you, he just kept hammering and hammering at me all the time. It was never a question that, do you like to do this? Do you want to do this? Do you agree with this or anything like that? None of that. He said, here, here's what you do. You apply these steps. You put these steps in your life. This is the way this program of recovery works. It doesn't work tomorrow. It doesn't work because you read it. It doesn't work because he's got it. You don't. This is the same for every one of us. Now, you, you can hammer this home and hammer it home, but at least be aware of it. The next time, where you were at right now, the next time, even today, right now, you get a bad thought. You get a mind that drifted off. Say it's floating out there somewhere now. What do you think that is? What do you think that is? If that ain't the power of self, what is it? The power of God? God tell you to take your mind and shoot it over there? He didn't tell you that. This is real self-honesty of self to see something that maybe you've been hiding from. Maybe you never knew it. But at least look at it. At least identify it if it's true. And you can benefit from it. Something can be done. Why not? Why not pay attention? You can always throw it away because the disease is waiting there for you all the time. And that's in print, too. It's right at every man's elbow. It says it's waiting to destroy you. The disease of alcoholism is waiting for you all the time. So if you don't do this, you can always have that. You'll never be, you'll never be away from the alcoholism that permanently. Step three, I believe, you know, the, the, the important part, too, I'll just, let me just read a, just a little bit on three. And it's on it's on the on the back on the last the second last page, and the reason for it is is that is each of these steps. You know, I'll tell you the truth. You know, I can talk forever in steps because there's never an ending because it's a living life. It's a way to go. It says in here. Now this this is really important to me, and it's important to me. I read all the time. I study all the time. It's never something that I rehearse. It's never something that I remember. And then I don't have to do it again. Because I have a mind that has a power, and the moment I let it loose, it becomes a power, and it overrule everything again. And there I am back in the same kind of world I've always lived in. It says, then it, then it is explained that the other steps of the AA program <clears throat> can be practiced with success only when step three is given a determined and persistent trial. This statement may surprise newcomers who have experienced nothing but constant deflation and a growing conviction that human will is of no value whatever. They have become persuaded, and rightly so, that many problems besides alcohol will not yield to a headlong assault powered by the individual alone. But now it appears there are certain things which only the individual can do. All by himself, in the light of his own circumstances, he needs to develop the quality of willingness. When he acquires willingness, he is the only one who can make the decision to exert himself. Trying to do this is an act of his own will. All of the 12 steps require sustained and personal exertion to conform to their principles, and so we trust in God's will. Now, you know, there's a lot of ground there. and We can talk for hours on just what I read there. Because it, it's something to do with thinking, acting, living daily. And it doesn't make no difference in the time factor. See, because when they say things in here, like it says, they have become persuaded, and rightly so, that many problems besides alcohol will not yield to a headlong assault powered by the individual alone. Well, I used to think when you come to Alcoholics Anonymous, you stop drinking, you go to work. You don't give your money, you're living to the bartender. Things will be okay. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> I, get, I get my hands going. 
You know, I thought that the alcohol, I thought that the alcohol was the, was my problem. And these other things that were ha happening were happening because they have to happen. Because that's the way life is. You win a few, you lose a few. You, you get this, and you don't get that, and so forth and so on. That ain't so. That's not true. So it's a question now, see, of realizing just exactly <clears throat> why do I make a decision to turn my will and my life over to care of God as I understood him? Understood again. It's only from two. To understood something is no more than an awareness. There is a power greater than me. Why not go there and set it to me? It's just, it's not understanding God. I'm not trying to understand God at all. I don't need to. It's not necessary. It's not needed. But it better be understood that there is a God and he has power that I, I don't have. So why not do this instead of what I do? And so this here means exactly what I read here, that my life now, at first I thought it was just drinking and then going to meetings and then eventually becoming a winner just by going to meetings and, and maybe praying a little better or whatever you do. And it never happened, see, because two and a half years I was in the same rat race I was in when I was drunk. I did the same, I acted the same, I thought the same, I treated the people the same, and the days produced another life of the same thing it did before. Three says that... It, that only me, in the light of my own circumstances, can exert this willingness. Trying to do that is an act of my own will. What is an act of my own will? My act of my own will is making a decision to believe in something other than self, to actually talk to, pray to, have, build a relationship with two into three, so that there is a power greater than me and it's called God. See, this was acceptable to me. Two, if you have said came to believe in a God greater than me or powerful or anything, I wouldn't believe it. I wouldn't do it because I wouldn't even say the Lord's Prayer the first two and a half years in Alcoholics Anonymous. When they say, say the prayer, you know, at the end of the meeting, they'd say, Anderson, would you lead us in the Lord's Prayer? No way, man. You'd stand there forever. You'd still be standing there now if you waited for me to say it. I just wouldn't do it. I just wouldn't do it. Let somebody else do it. But see, to have this way of life is a guarantee for each and every one of us, from any walk of life, from any position, doesn't make no difference who you are. So long as the disease of alcoholism is there, it's a guarantee for you like it is for me. You can't, no more. I used to look at everybody, my sponsor and everybody. And I would say, man, if I could only have what he has. If I could only do what he does. Man, if I could believe in the way he believes, I'd be all right. And I always thought it was out there. It's not out there. It's in here. It's always been in here. The whole, my whole life is here, and I didn't know it. The beliefs and the trust and the faith and the, and the application, the willingness and the surrender is still in me right now. It was in me then, too, but I didn't know it. I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know it was there to use, even. And yet here in the steps, they're opening it up for me. The key of willingness that I talked about, the willingness is for today's life. Willing to go farther, have more, do more. You got the power? The power greater than self makes it possible. And this here means exactly what it says it means. See, this here, this business now of step three, it's, there's so much ground to cover that because you can cover a lot of ground in talking about a power, about a God, in application. Now, you see, I believe, what I believe in is that yesterday's life, yesterday's life for any of us, any and all of us, whether it was a drunken yesterday, a sober yesterday, a happy yesterday, a sad yesterday, a rich yesterday, a poor yesterday, doesn't count. Doesn't count. The reason it doesn't count is because today is the day that my disease kills me. It tells me how terrible it is, how wrong the world is, how bad off I am, how I'm failing. I'm a loser. I can't win. Everything I touch turns sour. That's what? God telling me that? No way. That's the trust and the belief. And that's the power of self. That's what I came here for. And never, never knew it, never knew what it was. That this, what I'm talking about now, is a foundation principle of all of AA's 12 steps. To make a decision, to believe, to have, to do something with a power that's called God. Now I can do it. Before? No way. No way. Because I always stepped into the picture. I always said, this is something I know how to do. You know, this is this is important what I'm talking about now. And I had to find this stuff out by application, by trial and error in the beginning, because the message that I'm talking about now, I never heard this message delivered this way, and yet it comes out of these here these pages. It means exactly what it says right here. You can't read it and mean something else other than what it says. 
And this is exactly in step three. In step three on page 36, it talks in there about how I want to be sober and depend on being sober and how the man in the iron lung depends on the electricity for his breathing. So he's got dependency on there. But then page 37 up here at the top says, but the moment my mental or my emotional independence is in question, how differently we behave or I behave, how persistently I claim the right to decide all by myself just what I shall think and how I shall act. Oh, yeah, I'll weigh the pros and cons of every problem. I'll listen politely to those who advise me. But all of the decisions are to be mine alone. Nobody is going to meddle with my personal independence in such matters. Besides, I think there is no one I can surely trust. I am certain that I, my intelligence, backed by willpower, can rightly control my inner lives and guarantee me success in the world I live in. This brave philosophy whereon each man plays God sounds good in speaking, but it still has to meet the acid test. How well does it actually work? One good look in the mirror ought to be answer enough for any alcoholic. See, that's me. That's me. I want God. I want God to keep me sober. I want to be sober today. I don't want to be drunk today. But I want to handle my own life. I want the place I draw, the place I live, the place I go to for help, strength, guidance. This is always about God consciousness. No more about self-consciousness, about selfish self, about pleasing me. About me wanting it my way, anxious all the time, pushing and shoving, pushing and shoving, trying to make things so that I am all right. Please me. After you please me, you can do anything you want, but first please me. This is all about the disease of alcoholism. Step three is very, very important to look at step three for why it's worded like it is. Because that wording, I made a decision to turn my will and my life over to care of God as I understood him. What is your will and what is your life and what does in, in care mean? Also, what's understood? What's understood? We're in a program of recovery. We're in step three. This isn't about a church God. This isn't a God of ritual. This isn't a God of name. This isn't any of them things at all. This is a spiritual life. This is spiritual food. This is not got nothing to do with Bibles and churches. I'm not against nothing. I'm not trying to prove something here so that it's against that. Not that at all. The disease of alcoholism. There was never no success before Dr. Bob and Bill Wilson got together in June 10th, 1935. That's when Alcoholics Anonymous started. And when it started, it was needed so desperately, so badly for this year, this world of alcoholism. And this is why it's here. So that each one of us, it's up to you. If you don't want it, you don't have to even touch it. You don't even have to look at it. You can walk out of here and say that's all baloney. It's fine. It doesn't make a difference to me. I'm a messenger. I carry a message. The message I carry is about my life. I carry a message that's already in print. It has nothing to do with me. It's not me at all. I, I have nothing to do with this. But you see, I have to learn a great deal about who I am and how the disease is and how it centers in my mind where it tells me things. And I listen to it. And it'll take me right straight to hell every time. And I don't care. I think I have the right to decide all by myself just exactly how I'm going to think and act. And yet, though, every time I do it, I hurt people. I'm a loser, a loser to life. A loser to life just because of who? Only me, my worst enemy. I'm only fighting me all the time. I'm not fighting God. I'm fighting me. And this step here has allowed me to make a beginning now. When I made this decision to turn my will and life over to care of God, it allows me in a program of recovery, which is a way of life, is the character building I am. This ain't something I'm going to put to sleep tonight, not use tomorrow, or lock it up in the closet with the alcoholism. There's none of them things. This is a way of thinking, acting, being that gives me something I never had before. I never lost it through drinking. I never had it. It just wasn't there. I, I can't remember a time myself, personally, where I was kind, considerate, generous, or any of these other things that, that I know have to be there to have a world that God wants me to have. I never was. I was always pushing and shoving, ranting and raving, screaming, taking all the time, pushing and shoving, making sure you please me. I want what I want. I want it now or I don't want it. That's the damn disease of alcoholism that's in the character I built and still there today. We'll go into four and then we'll go into questions on maybe on that. Is <clears throat> we're doing good on time. <clears throat> you know, in four, we're 
Wherefore, it says, I made a searching and fearless moral inventory of myself. And this is probably, I, I think anyway, from what I experienced, it's a very hard, very hard step to take because of the misunderstanding about what it is, not the understanding, the misunderstanding about what you're doing and why you're doing it and how to do it and all that. Because at the time, I, I know I've taken many inventories and I've taken with my sponsor and everything else like that. And I, it, at the time, uh, I thought I was doing right. I really did. But it was something that I, I, had, to, I had to really get with it to find out exactly why it says made a, I made a searching and fearless moral inventory of my defects of character. Is that the character that I brought, brought here in Alcoholics Anonymous I never looked at that character as a step application. See, I looked at me in terms of that's that's there, that's all, you know. And so here, this says in there that I made a searching and fearless moral inventory. Moral would be no more than it's looking at it right to wrong, and don't go no farther than that. And also, I had to look at the defects of character were in me as I brought me to Alcoholics Anonymous. So the defects of character were the things I was using in my life today. Now, I don't care where they come from and how long they've been there. That's not the question, see. The question is, what's, what's going on in my life today? What am I loaded with? Who am I? How do I tick? What's, let's find out what's in me. Because, you see, I never knew. I never knew this, you know. Because I thought time healed a lot. I thought meetings held, healed a lot. Sponsors healed a lot. Uh, I thought uh, reading heals a lot. Uh, listening to you read heals a lot. In other words, I thought... In terms, I know a great deal. But you see, I still respond to life after many years away from the alcohol. I still respond to life the same way I did when I was drinking. I still look out with the same eyes, driven by the same power, by the same defect of character, many years later. Because I, I actually honestly had a sponsor that really hammered on me, and I listened, and I tried, and I did, and I but I still was the same man sober as I was drunk. Because of the step application, the building of the character wasn't there. It just wasn't there. My meetings were, and my being sober was, and going with the sponsor was, but there was nothing there any different than it ever was because I didn't know. I didn't know why I got so angry. I didn't know why I was so jealous. I didn't know why I couldn't trust you. I didn't know why I'm a suspicious character. I'm always questioning your behavior, who you are, what you stand for. I'm always looking at the world out of the same eyes that I looked at when I was drunk. And I think that hey, 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 now I don't have to worry about that stuff no more, see? Because this here way of life, that it qualifies me. It doesn't qualify me at all. Just going to meetings, there's no more than going to meetings. Just being the same man, after I go to a meeting and then leave a meeting, I never look at that. I never look at the times I'm driving my car that I want to run you off the road. I never look at that. You ever look at that? See, the character that I am, I built a character a long time ago. And that character that I brought here is still me, but it's got something wrong with me. I've got something wrong with me. And now I better start finding out about it because I already passed two steps. And I already passed what I said in page 23. It would be academic to even to talk about this stuff. We never took the drink in the first place. And then step one says something. It said in step one, glass in hand, I warp my mind. Glass in hand, I warp my mind. Now, you know what a warp, I know what a warp mind is. Believe me, I do. But the expression fits an alcoholic, at least like me anyway, pretty well. Because I do have a mind that's hurt, it's bent, it's warped. It got that way a long time ago. I established this mind in me by living in a world the way I lived in it. I lived in it by selfie self, by pushing, shoving, demanding, always demanding, all the time. All of a sudden, the character that I am can do no more than that because that's what that's the kind of life I produce. I produce a life that comes from a warped mind. And then when you get to step two, at the ending of two, and it says in there that I'm willing to admit I'm a problem drinker, but in fact I won't admit I'm mentally ill, that's in print. It's right in step two, last page. You see, what they're saying there is just words, and all of what I'm talking about is just words, and just words alone don't mean nothing. They wouldn't, but you won't benefit by words. You can you can be a walking encyclopedia, and be the dumbest person on this earth. 
You can have all the knowledge there is to have. You can be the smartest cookie around. And you know what? You'll have an unmanageable life. You'll have some so much trouble, so much adversity come into your life just because of that reason. And see, this here business now is that the warped mind that I have, the way my mind functions, in four it says exactly, I've got defects of character. Where are my defects of character? They're not in my body, that's for damn sure. Not, not at 31 they weren't. So what is it that I'm talking about? I'm talking about a mind. The mind that's on page 37, we've talked in there about the moment my mental or my emotional independence is in question, how differently I'll behave. You see, in the day I'm in, I look at people. Now, it doesn't make no difference what walk of life you're at. Maybe you look at people that are like I was. I was a mechanic in a garage, you know. So I see more. I see customers. I see uh, other mechanics and all that. Well, my thoughts about them can be the same as the thoughts about yours. If Maybe you're in an office. Maybe you with some gals or guys and they're all dressed up in suits. But your mind isn't dressed up in suits. Your mind is still, still that same mind, man. That same mind. You see, this here in step three, it's, it's, it's so important to remember the, the principles or the reason or the purpose of building a character by step application that started, in, in first for me, it started in ABCs, what I call ABCs, alcoholism, ego, and self, which we talked about. So I would identify me, see me, recognize me, the way I behave, and so on. So that when I get into steps, there's a purpose of these step applications, especially in the order form they're in, especially when we're at step four, because we already built a character by application from one, two, three, and you, you couple this up now. You've got a character, in, a new character being built. One, two, three. No longer is it left up to you to decide what you're going to put down on paper. No longer is it up to you to decide, oh, you, you want to do this, you don't want to do it. You have to do it because you have to build this character because it's going to be according to the power of greater self, which is God. So the character now is banking on God. It's banking on instead of going to your pleasures, your desires, your time, whenever you feel like it. No, you think that, was, that, that that's not the way it's going to be no more. Step, th step three allowed me to start a program from a foundation where I can have something now I never could have before. I made a decision to turn my will in my life. That's the character I am. That's the character I brought here. I'm going to turn that character over to God's power, God's will. It's his presence, not my presence. His consciousness, not mine. Four says, now I can make a searching and fearless moral inventory exactly who I am. I can start putting people, and I always tell these guys or gals, when you're making an inventory, this is my opinion, now remember that. This ain't out of the book. This is an opinion. That if I start with the people that I love the most, the closest to me, that I can start doing something now that I couldn't before with a stranger because I'm still blaming them. But I can look at my mother, my father, my brother, my sisters, my wife, in a behavior of my behavior, not theirs, the way I treated them, the different times I said something, the different times I did something. I can look at it for what it really is. And I was that character. I was loaded with me. I did have everything in me to act accordingly to what I thought and what I believed because it was me. And I want to find out what is me. What, where do I get this stuff from? Why did I choose to, to turn on people like rattlesnakes? Why don't I trust somebody? Why can't I love somebody and show them unconditional love? Why can't I do that? Because I can't. I'm not equipped to do that. i got a mind that's wrapped up with me, selfie self. i got a mind that says that I have to be convinced that any life running self-will could hardly be a success. And so this, all this here now is starting to go into a formation or a accumulation of a character building where I have great knowledge now and a great awareness, not understanding, awareness of a behavior that I do, drunk or sober, it makes no difference. And I never could do this before because I could never see me. Because every time I looked at me, I looked at you. Every time I looked at me and having trouble, I blamed you. Every time I was anywhere at all that was wrong, I found a way to say it's your fault. And this is true, whether I was broke or not, it made no difference. Now, in step four, to make a searching and fearless moral inventory, a searching isn't going back to my childhood. Now, let me tell you about this. I had to get it real clear about these here defects of character. 
If they did come from my childhood and they're in my life today, put it down. It belongs there because I use that in my life today and that's my problem. I don't have to go searching, looking in the past to find some kind of an excuse, some kind of a rationalization that somebody treated me so rotten years ago that I'm like I am today because of that. That's not right. It couldn't be right, at least not in my life. I know for sure that the life I told you about that I started when I was about 15, that was living in a world, and I was responsible in this world. I was responsible to the money I spent, to what I did, how I acted, where I went. I was responsible. And this means exactly that. That's when the character building started to turn into the character that I brought here. Full of selfishness, self-centeredness. True of all these here mind-controlling things. That I want things my way and I want it now. This here, this step four, made a searching and fearless moral inventory. And I had to keep looking at the moral inventory is right to wrong. How I acted and I should have met. How, why I should have done this instead of that. Instead of trying to confuse the issue of the character that I am in the day I'm in, I want to find out defects of character is how I survive in the day I'm in today, today, this day. But then I have to look backwards through people to see where they're at and what they are. Because there is a beginning, there is a way that this year right now can show me why I, why I was jealous. I was jealous of my wife. I, I, I accused her, whether she was an angel, I still accuse her. It didn't make no difference. Why I couldn't trust somebody. I could never trust somebody. I'm a perfectionist. Anything you do, I have to redo it. Because you don't, you can't do it good enough for me. These are defects of character that I use in my day that I'm in. This is that, this is that terrible, terrible power of self. Where self wants to destroy the world just to prove himself right. Where you can't adjust your thinking. No way can you adjust your thinking. You, you can't do it. You want to do it, you might try it, but you can't do it. It's because the character that I live by, the defects of character are still in me in an energy force. So I go there. I draw from there. I think from there. I act from there. But it goes into a lot of other areas. At the same time, when all this is happening, it's happening the same for me. It would be for you if you're an alcoholic with alcoholism. You're starting to push and shove and do things that you're ashamed of. You're starting to do things that you wish you never had done. You're starting to lose self-respect. That's where I couldn't even look in the mirror. I didn't trust me no more, and I'm sober. Why can't I trust me? Well, because I'm liable to flip out any second. Because I'll revert right back to my defects of character. I never build a new character. I never expose in my mind who I am, what's in there. Catch me off guard, you'll find me out in a minute. Go in a restaurant. Yeah, right. Go in a restaurant. And I'll go in a restaurant, and everything's cool. They bring me the, they bring me the bacon, and it's cooked too hard. You know what happens? I go to hell. Now I raise, I, I raise hell. I don't like it. Tell the cook to eat the damn stuff he likes it like that. Bring it the way I like it. Next thing you know, there's a big scene going on. And I start, and I start to push and shove, and I don't know. I'm a defective character. I got defects in me that I listen to, and the defects have to be recognized. At the same time, there's always got to be a fear list in every defect, because the fears are a spinoff, always a spinoff. And I have to put them down. I have to recognize them, identify them. That's me. That's my life. That's the way I tick. That's how I think. That's how I act. I'll always be like this. If I don't change, let's find out why I have to change or what it is I have to change. This is why in step four, and you know, I believe myself, and I know personally, the misunderstanding of this here step, of putting down an inventory, I know for alcoholics, I don't know how many in this room here, but I know for sure that I know a bunch of them anyway, is that how many inventories are always locked in the trunk of your car six months later, they're still in there? How many? They're, 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 there's got to be somebody here like that because there always is. is and, and, the, you know, and really, you shouldn't have to worry about the, about the four-step inventory. You should lock up the fifth step. That's the one you should lock up. It's, it's because, yeah, that's the one that's the hardest to do. Four... To know the purpose of four, I think, to gain any any progress or any uh, uh, success or uh, uh, having something now that you didn't have before, was it isn't hard, really. The self-honesty of self, I believe, and my sponsor taught me self-honesty. It was like we were talking in the beginning, is that if you don't want to do this or any of this, go ahead and just do your own thing. But you have to pay a price. And the price you pay is the same price you've always paid. 
And it means the world you live in is the world you can't live in because it's too rotten, too wrong, too many people, this, that, and everything else. So why not at least try it? Why not at least identify it and see if it's there? Actually make a, make a written, written inventory about your defects, about the real thinking process you use in your head in the day you're in. And you can do this easy. I know you can do it easy by self-honesty, identifying yourself. Because you know what? As we go along in steps, building a character, when you get down the line somewhere, wherever that is, doesn't make no difference, is to think in terms that maybe, maybe you didn't do step four right, and that's why you're having trouble today. You see, that don't make sense. That does not make sense. You see, the application of step four or any steps in building the character means exactly that. The character is being built by application. Application is today, meaning now. So we're building a character as we go along that we live. We live with this character. As we live with this character, it produces the life that I'm talking about all the time. It's not a future thing. You, so you see the step application now in building the character where it says I made a searching and fearless moral inventory of me, my, my defects, so that I can see now that there's something to do because the building of the character, I have to find out what's wrong with me. I have to find out what's in me. What does this? I have to identify it. It started in the ABCs I'm talking about in step one, two, three, four. And that's what this is all about right now, the workshops like this. To know that what we're doing right now, you can have today, this day, now, everything that's for you in your life today according to the will of God and the program recovery, meaning an application of the character that you're applying for your life today. That's a hard message to hear. See, it's real hard. This concept's real hard to hear. But if you listen and you keep listening, you'll see that as we go along like this, you'll be more aware of your thought process. You'll be more aware of the day you're in when a thought comes and you don't have to give it energy. A thought comes, but it don't stay. So see, this is what this is about right now, building the new character, changing. You see, this here is right now, on right now. See, you can lock yourself out of here if you want to, simple as that. You can stay here and your mind can leave. That's easy. So, you, you know, and this is true. But you see more, there's more identity. You're hearing more. Now, some of this, now you might not think some of this is registering, but believe me, there's a percentage of this registering in your subconscious. Not your conscious, your subconscious. Your conscious mind tells you to know it all. <laughs> it does. Don't know exactly everything you said. No, you don't. But a percentage of it you do, and that's the purpose of delivering the message. Just the message. I'm a messenger. I'm not the message. You see, it has to be offered to you. Because if you're like me, can you take this page and put it in application for your life today and live like that? Can you do that? I couldn't do it. There's no way I could do it. There isn't. You know what? In this book here, it starts on page 21 to 125. That's the 12 steps are on. You turn there, 21 to 125, any page, any page. Just open it up and flip it there and read it. And it will always tell you exactly what to do. Tell you what's wrong, what to do. Always. There's a direction. It's a textbook. This is all in print. You don't have to go anywhere else to even, even hear it. It's here, right here. But you see, there has to be more than that for me because I have something wrong with me. I have the disease of alcoholism. I have a power that's in my head that tells me I don't need to do that. I have done that. I know what that means. I know how to handle anything now. I'm okay. No, you're not. You can't be. Because the power of self, building the character, the second that you go into your mind, you're with your disease. And when you're with the disease, there's no such thing as this. There's only self. The defects of character that step four is talking about has to be presented in each and every one of us. It's going to be your inventory, not mine, but for sure. Whatever is there, at least you know now what's in your mind today. Your whole life, your whole trouble, everything about you is in your mind right now, right today, this day, because that's where your trouble starts. That's where all the disease, the power, that's where all the hurts and the harms and the memories, that's where all of this business of living cannot be a success because of what's there. And yet, though, step four is no more than just writing. Just that's all it is, just writing. No more than that. Just going in in your own mind. Nobody could see it. Nobody even knows about it. They don't have to know about it even. But yet you have to do it. 
The reason you have to do it is because I never knew who I was. I just didn't know. I didn't know what was the matter with me. I didn't know why I acted and reacted to situations. I didn't know that this world I lived in, it's a good world. It's not a bad world. I thought it was. I thought it was full of bad people. I did. I actually thought that. I thought that all I had to do is just stay away from certain people, do certain things with other people, and everything's going to be cool. No, it ain't. It ain't, because it ain't going to stay that way. See? Because I'll find, I'll find what I always find. I'll find an unmanageable life. And so, you know, in step, in step four, I think the, the, the most impressive thing for me was the fact that to take an inventory would be no more than an inventory of what's in my mind today, no matter where it came from in time, but not to go searching for something, to blame something, or to pick on something, or to say, I'm like I am today because of that. Because the program recovery overrules that. The program recovery says that each and every one of us, we can have the life that we're supposed to have in application, no matter where you come from, no matter what happened to you, because each one of us have a, have a, have a story. Each one of us have a track record. And we can say we're unique. We're a little different. No, we're not. This here program recovery is all about recovery. It's not about failure. It's not about yesterday's life. It's not about that so that I can blame that or use that. It's not. It can't be. That would limit God. That would put it so that this God could not do today what needs to be done for me because I'm different. I come from a different world. No, I don't. You see, this has to be the self-honesty in each one of us. How much of this you want, how much you're going to do, I have no idea. But I know that I have to have exactly what I tell you. I must have the daily reprieve contingent on the maintenance of my spiritual condition. Every day is a day I must carry the vision of God's will into all my activity. My activity is everything I can do, everything I can think, any place I go. It doesn't make no difference. We'll, get, we'll go down the line a little quicker here. I don't want, don't want to get too hung up here. I'll, we'll, I'll get some questions before, before four. Maybe if, you, if I haven't covered something on four, there's a lot to say, an awful lot, and I'm trying to cram it all into a certain time element. So uh, if you got something that you want to say, let me tell you, step three and step four, three especially, is real difficult because of what you have to do, making it seem like it's impossible or making it seem like you don't know what to do. Because to make a decision to turn your will and your life out of care of God as you understood Him, do not understand Him, it's real difficult sometimes to do that. Because all of us, we come here without a God, we come here with one, we come with one we lost, or one we, we don't want to go near. But you see, it fits every one of us because they change the word so that it will fit all of us. You know? See, I was a true agnostic, and I never knew that. See, I didn't know what agnostic was. See, I wasn't an atheist or anything like that. I was a, an agnostic. See, an agnostic I had to find out for me is either an ignorant or uninformed person. I was speaking and acting from a position I had no basis, no foundation for. I was ignorant of who God was. I was ignorant about what it is. See, an uninformed meant no more than I just didn't want to touch it, didn't want to hear about it, just don't speak of it, and so on. Because the people I live with, that's the way they live too. But now it's a, it's a different story. I've been introduced in Alcoholics Anonymous to something I need so badly in my life because I have to, I have to get away from me, and there's no way I can get away from me except by a power greater than me. And that's what this is about here. So in, in step five, when it says, I admit it to God, to myself, and another human being, the exact nature of my wrongs, the hardest thing about step five that I believe it was very easy for me to admit to God, to another human being. I had a lot of buddies real close to me, and I could admit almost damn near everything I ever did, except for one thing I kept out one time. And the admitting isn't, isn't, isn't the hard part, I believe, for me. But it says, I admit it to God to myself. Well, there's the hard part right there. See, to admit to myself is not to accept it. I could admit this and then walk my own way. I could admit it and blame it on condition, place, people, things. The only reason I did that was because of you, whoever you were. They made me do it. I acted like that. I had to act like that. I could do no, 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 nothing else. To admit something, to get off the hook. Geez, that's easy to do. All of us know how to do that. I know how to do that. I know how to not get fired. Just tell the boss you're going to do it again. Just promise them that you're going to turn around. Tell your wife when you're married, sober. I'm going to change. I'm going to treat you nice now. I might have acted badly yesterday. I'm going to treat you nice now. 
I know it's wrong. I won't do that again. Turn right around and do it again. Because admitting something is no more than admitting it under pressure, if I have to, but to accept it, to really accept it internally. No way. I don't know how to accept things like that. Because this is what that step's about. So that I can become somebody now. I can be one man to the world I live in. The world I live in. I want to be one person. I want to be one man to everyone I meet. I don't care who they are. I don't want to wear faces and play games. I don't want to do things just to get favors, be considered. How could I learn to do this if I keep this old thought writing with the defects of character, the old self, building the character in Alcoholics Anonymous by step application as I live my life today? I've already went through one, two, three, four. I'm in five. You see, I'm coming from a different, a, a different perspective, a different way of looking, a different way of thinking in life as I live my life. You see, I'm getting away from self. I'm starting now to start identify what's needed. Now, this is something real careful that I have to look at because, you see, if you look at steps one, two, three, four, five, and six, it's an application of the disease so that it is not there. It's identifying it, what's wrong with it, what it is, uh, what I have to do. Uh, this here, this business now, we get into six is where it'll be, it'll be a lot, at least to me, a lot clearer. Uh, this here, this business now we get into six is where it'll be, it'll be a lot, at least to me, a lot clearer about this here character that I'm building. I'm never left high and dry. I'm building a character now that I can go into the day I'm in, in the world I'm in, and face things now differently than I ever did before. I'm not running in defects of character. I'm not using lies. I'm not using the power of self that I've always used before in my life. Sober. I'm not talking about drunk. Sober. You see, there's something happening here. But the only way it can happen is application. So the character that I am is living by principles, spiritual in their nature. That's what these principles are. And I said that. Remember when I read that? Our eight, 12 steps are a group of principles, spiritual in their nature. So that's what this is about now. So here we are going along in step. Now, as I live this life in the day I'm in, the character is changing. Before, I was going to me all the time. Before, I was talking to me. I'm a self-talker. I talk to me all the time. Talk, talk, talk all the time. Now, I found out, too, I can't do that. I better talk to a power greater than me, and they call it God. Now, I, I can do something now I couldn't do before. It's understood that there is a power that makes it possible for you and I to do anything and all things in a life we're in as we live our life. It doesn't make a difference who you are. There's only one set of steps. One set. Twelve steps. One set for each and every one of us here makes no difference who you are. Does I don't care who you are. I don't care what your troubles are. Problems other than alcohol. Says so. It's there. It's all there. Every bit's there. Now I'm going to have to see more, to do more, to be more. And that's what this is about right now. In five, when I admit to God. This here, admitting to God and to another human being, it means that I'm allowing something now to be there. I don't have to run and hide. The door of my past is wide open. I'm not, I'm not scared of being found out. I'm coming into a world now, a different world than I ever lived in before. I don't have to look good in your eyes. I don't need to. I don't have to prove myself or prove you. I don't have to look at you and accept and want your approval. Whoever you are, I don't want your approval. I don't need it. It isn't necessary. It's good to take compliments, but I have to give them to God anyway. This has got to be looked at for what... For the reason why you're building a character in Alcoholics Anonymous. Why are you building a character? And why do you keep coming to meetings? Why do you keep reading? Why? You mean to say this here, this life here, you, it's, it's, it's fixed? This is not fixed. This is a spiritual life. This is spiritual growth. We're learning how to use what we're finding out now in a new character application for the rest of your life. If you want it the rest of your life. You see, I didn't know that. I was always looking as an ended thing, completed. I was always looking for the final, the final act. Get it over with. Done. Boy, I'm okay now. There is no such thing. There's each daily operation of my life has to be with a new character in application. Now, the application, I keep saying the word because it was a strange word to me because the other word, work, got in there. Work steps and all that. This isn't working. This is a living life, an application life, a doing thing. You apply it. You use it. 
It's how you are. It's because you are that person. That's what I want to know. How do you stay this person? Why do you stay it this way I'm talking about? Step five, where I admit to God, myself, and another human being the exact nature of my wrongs is no more than accepting what I did in four. I wrote about four. I wrote about an inventory. I wrote about my mind. I wrote about my days, the way I perform, how I act, how I think. It was related to people, the fears that I used to have. I had to write a fear list because I don't want to get rid of a defect and find out I'm still scared, still running scared. I'm still looking backwards. I'm still thinking that trouble's doomsday is going to come. Here comes doomsday. I can't, I can't make it no more. This is a fear based. Fear based on what? Based on a defect. What's a defect? The way I used to think and act. I'm going to get fired. They're going to fire me. My house, I had it for years. And I thought, they're going to lose it. Fear based. I won't be able to make the payment. I can't, I can't walk in the day I'm in because I'm all wrapped up with me. I'm all wrapped up with my yesterdays, my paychecks. They might disappear. Here, I've got money in my pocket. I got no problem paying the damn bills, but I got the fear base. I got the fear inside of me. I ain't going to make it. Something's going to happen. Here comes trouble. Now what do you do? I, see, I was always expecting the worst because I lived by the worst. I lived by my mind, and my mind used to be in a place where it was losing all the time. Nothing was permanent. Couldn't be in my life. Everything was temporary. And that was only because of who I was and the way I thought, with the power I was, believing that I could produce a better life and I couldn't produce it. And so that's, see, step five, it, to me, is, is the hardest thing, is the acceptance of what I wrote about. The total acceptance. The acceptance means now. doesn't mean once just to get past the step. That isn't what we're doing. We're not trying to get past steps. We're trying to build a life. By application. So the character that I am is the character that comes from the application. Now, today, this day. I'm not getting ready for tonight. I'm not, honest to God, I'm not. I'm not anticipating any trouble at night that I have to get prepared, have to practice a certain step or whatever it is. That kind of thinking went out the window a long time ago because God says, no, I'll take care of you. No harm will come to you. I'll take care of you. And this is true, even today, right today, and it has been true for years, that my Heavenly Father is taking care of me. No harm, no temptation is going to harm me, hurt me. And so this, I, gotta, I, have, I have believed in this for a lot of years. It, is, it holds true in all of my affairs. It's got to. It holds true in my affairs when they're in an operating room. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna put you in a cemetery, he says. And where else? Anywhere I go. It doesn't make no difference. So you see, this is important for each and every one of us, at least to be presented with this. What you're going to do with it, I have no idea. But I know for sure that when this message that I know is the message of Alcoholics Anonymous, my life turned right around. It was a different world, different people. Everything's different. This became something real special. It became something that I never knew was possible. I could maybe get a glimpse of something, but never could I ever really know this because I couldn't experience it. And this is why this here workshop here, we can talk about things here and we can ask questions and we can learn a great deal by awareness. Just awareness is all. And so if, see if there is something that you might think yourself is needed, at least it's there so you can try it. You can believe in it or trust it or even do it and see. I had a, I, when we get into another step up the line a little bit, it, it's so important. To know that this year steps from one to six are for a reason that I never considered. It's a, and it's a reason that's very valid. Because you see, if you look at the steps in the order form they're in, and I've been talking about this now, you'll see that as each step in character change is needed to treat alcoholism because of what it does, the step does, why it's in that order form. Now, I know Bill Wilson didn't know this when he wrote it. He wrote it, but he didn't know that God wanted it in this order form so that each step follows another step by number so we don't mix them up, so we don't scatter them out and go to the other end and come backwards or something like that. Because of what's there, first the disease of recognizing what's wrong with me, step one. And then in two, to learn in step two that I'm going to have to, I'm going to, have, to have an open mind. I'm going to have to do something that I never did before. I'm going to have to quit quarreling, quit arguing. Quit looking at things upside down all the time. Quit finding fault. Why not look at something good instead of something bad? Why not say it's going to be 
Maybe it's only going to be 50% sunshine instead of 50% rain out there. Why not look at it pretty good? You can do it. I know you can. Because I'm a fault finder. And this is what it's teaching me now in the defects of character. Teaching me in the power of self. The way I think and act in the day I'm in. How I'll decide all by myself how to think and act. It can't be. It can't be. But you see this here now is all building up a character so that this character that I am, I can perform this way. The reason I can is because in the order form the steps are, step two was identified of what step two is, and three says now you can do it. You can actually do it. It's understood that there is a power, it's called God, that can do something you can't do. Why not go to that power? Why not use that power? And then in four, when I'm looking at these defects to see who I am and what I am and how I tick, at least recognize my impatience in the years that I've got. Why do I have to get so anxious at somebody? Did I, did I look at them funny? Why do I have to do that? Why can't I just let them take their time? Man, I'm in a hurry all the time. Even when my disease is treated, I'm in a hurry. It seems like I haven't got the patience. Man, I, I look to see something, and because you can't see it, I see it. I think I, you should do it as quick as I see it. See? And, I, and I don't have that compassion in me. I just don't have it. Here we're learning, or I'm learning a great deal of the character that I am, why it has to be this way, why we keep coming here. And so you see, in five, when five there, I believe what I said is, is the major thing, at least I think so, is the fact of i be accepting me for who I really am, what's inside of me. I've got something wrong with me. I've got a twisted mind, a warped mind. I've got, I've got some problems that says I'm mentally ill. I'm bodily and mentally, mentally different, my fellow man. Chapter 3, page 30 says that, and I believe that, I know that. And so why can't I use this then to good purpose? Why can't I slow down and not be so strong? Why, why do I have to keep getting really strong in the day I'm in against somebody or something? This has shown me how the new character being built can do that, because it isn't coming from the old character. And so you go into step 6. Well, let's we'll, we'll, we'll just wait here. We, we got, uh, yeah, let's not take a break yet. I'll tell you why. We're at 12, around 12.15, 12 uh, Randy says we'll, right, right? About 12.15? Okay. And so 12.15, we'll go for lunch. 12.15 to 1.15, okay? Or 1.30, all right? So so let's not, let's not break yet. Huh? Oh, and yours? No, oh, on the uh, on step five is uh, step five. Uh, you know, uh, uh, to admit to God, to myself, another human being, the exact nature of my wrongs, it, it became pretty pretty evident to me in the day I was in that it was something that I did, and then I got past it. it I got to a place where. Uh, I, I started living in a life that uh, was a continuous life, doing the same things, but I was, I was kind of modifying things. I was trying to do something that I believed was correct. By, by my behavior, I was trying to regulate and my behavior. I was trying to actually do something. And see, in Alcoholics Anonymous, it was never established in the beginning. As far as the message goes for me, what I heard, or at least what I thought I heard, and what was going on, that Alcoholics Anonymous doesn't modify me. See? In other words, when I came here, Alcoholics Anonymous doesn't give me something that I'm going to add to what I already have, my, my life. See, and I thought that was what it was, see, because the being sober, going to meetings, and doing so much, and I was very, very active in AA, by meetings, leading meetings, picking babies up, buying things, and setting things up, and just co constantly, continuously, Every day I lived in AA, I was, I was working in AA by, by working, meaning setting chairs up, holding meetings and stuff like that. I was very, very busy. Uh, I was a chairman for two years up at San Fernando at the steering committee meeting even. And that was way back in the 50s. That was way back in 57, that was. 57 and 58, I believe. You see, the mod, the, to be modified was a thought process that I had to get rid of because I could not get rid of the old character in, in application. See, I just couldn't do it. So as these steps are going along now, 
And as I'm building this character, now, in the beginning, I was not building this character. I was going through a process of going to meetings, listening, and doing everything the same way I've always done it. But I was watching it. In other words, I was, I was controlling my behavior. Uh, I was very, very nice when I, when, I, when I had to be, and so on. You see, in step six, uh, five rather, in five, it was where I admit to myself and accept myself for who I am and what I am. It wasn't until that application, now I have done step before this with my sponsor, but it wasn't until the actual building of the character started to take place in application that I started to change, meaning the day I was in, I wasn't being modified. It was new. I started to carry through the day the principles that was introduced in the application of steps because I could recognize and I could see and identify my behavior. And that's what step six is going to be about. But see, five is where this acceptance, where I really, truly, honestly looked at me. I wrote that. I act like that. That's me. I'm like this drunk or sober. My whole life is backed up by me, the same me I've always been. It'll never be any different. Now, that's a hard nut to swallow. See, because it's a hidden disease. The alcoholism is a hidden disease. It's there and it's not there. And when it's not there, it could be maybe some kind of a success. It's some, some kind of a pat on the back. It could be maybe an accomplishment that you're not giving God credit for, that you're taking the credit for. And so here comes your ego. And here comes your thought process, that you're special. You're very self-important to self. And that in turn, see, is something that I cannot look at. I don't identify this. It allows me to go in the day I'm in. And I'm still going to do the same thing. The first thing you know, I'm looking at somebody. I'm bad-mouthing them. I'm thinking bad in my, mouth, in my mind about them. I'm character assassination. That's in the next step. And I'm doing all of them things. You see, in Alcoholics Anonymous... It's, there's nothing offered on a silver platter here. I know that. But I didn't know it at the time because of the disease being a hidden disease. That any kind of success, any kind of success in the day I'm in, can flip me out. You would think it would be the other way around. At least I thought it was the other way around. I thought it had to be adversity. I thought it had to be trouble, pain, suffering. And then, then I do differently. But it's just the opposite. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.